Join the Thinking in English Conversation Club right now. For just $2 a week, you can join with other English learners, practice speaking, have conversations, enjoy yourself, and use new vocabulary. We run conversation clubs every Tuesday and Thursday at 12 pm, 6 pm, and 9 pm UK time. So there's no excuse. You can join and you should join right now. Join the Thinking in English Conversation Club. Link in the description. Hello, I'm Tom Wilkinson, and welcome to the Thinking in English podcast, a podcast for intermediate to advanced level English learners. Today, I am going to give you all an introduction to the different methods commonly used to improve pronunciation. Listen to discover the best way to develop excellent pronunciation and correct the underlying problems and issues you face. You can find the full transcript to today's podcast for free over on the Thinking in English blog and the link is in the description. Check out my YouTube page and Instagram page, both called Thinking in English Podcast. Join my conversation clubs over on Patreon. Take a class with us, the link is in the description. And leave a like, rating or review wherever you are listening right now. Here is today's episode. Pronunciation is an essential part of effective communication in all languages including English. Poor pronunciation can lead to mistakes, misunderstandings and miscommunication. This can make it difficult for native speakers to understand what a non-native speaker is trying to say. I know this from personal experience. I can't begin to describe the amount of pronunciation mistakes I have made in Japanese and Chinese. Even pronouncing a word slightly differently or incorrectly can completely confuse your conversation partner. Pronunciation also plays a crucial role in how someone perceives you. Good pronunciation can make a positive first impression. If you have good pronunciation, your conversation partner's perception or impression of your intelligence, credibility and competence will likely increase. And the opposite is also true. Poor pronunciation can make communication difficult, creating a bad or negative first impression. When communication is difficult, it also becomes difficult to make personal connections and establish trust. Especially if you work in business and need business English, poor pronunciation can stop you from effectively communicating with clients, customers and even colleagues. I want to make something clear. Pronunciation and accent are different things. I don't believe you need to speak with a perfect British or American accent. It's not important. Keeping your accent allows you to stay in touch with your culture and identity. I don't want you to sound British or like me. I want you to sound like you. However, Being understandable is important. There is not necessarily one correct pronunciation, but there are incorrect ways to pronounce words. Improving your pronunciation rather than focusing on changing your entire accent will help you become more understandable. Okay, that is all easy to say. Obviously, pronunciation is important. But how can you actually improve yours? What are the best ways to improve pronunciation? I've spent a lot of time reading about this topic, for my own benefit mainly. I've also talked to some of my good friends, both language learners and language teachers. And I've discovered many different techniques to improving pronunciation. Today, I want to divide these techniques into popular methods to improve pronunciation and scientific or evidence-based methods to improve pronunciation. Within these categories, I'll discuss a few of the techniques and their pros and cons. Importantly, everything I'm saying is general and not specific to you. 
Everyone is different. Everyone has unique ways of learning. Some people are naturally talented and gifted at accents and pronunciation. Other people, like me, need to try really hard to correct their mistakes. The evidence-based techniques I'm going to introduce will probably improve your pronunciation more consistently and will address any underlying problems or issues you have, but they are usually more difficult than the popular methods. The important thing is to find a technique that works for you and achieves actual results. Popular methods to improve pronunciation. First, let's discuss some of the popular methods used to improve English pronunciation. These are methods commonly suggested by articles on the internet or internet teachers. And when students tell me they are practicing their pronunciation, they are usually using one of these popular methods. But are they actually that good? Drill based pronunciation exercises. The first broad category of methods to improve pronunciation that I want to talk about are drill based exercises. These are a very popular method of pronunciation training and something that I have often recommended as a tool to practice and train your mouth. There are many different variations on drill based exercises. Repeating words and sounds, tongue twisters, like she sells seashells by the seashore. I've talked about tongue twisters a lot before, so I won't do it again today. Or pronunciation drills in group settings. Another popular drill exercise is looking at minimal pairs. Minimal pairs are words or phrases in a language that only differ in one phonological element. Or in plain English, they only have one different sound. Mat and bat, hot and hut, toe and two, zen and gen. All of these are examples of minimal pairs focusing on different sounds. By studying and repeating minimal pairs, you can really focus on specific sounds. I often use minimal pairs with students who have native languages that don't have certain English sounds, like not having separate l and r sounds. By repeating words like lice and rice, or glow and grow, you can really notice how the sound is pronounced. This is because the majority of sounds in that word are exactly the same. By isolating the one challenging sound you want to focus on, you can really practice. It is like a bodybuilder who focuses on training one muscle at a time, rather than their whole body. By focusing on one muscle or muscle group, or sound for us, you can notice improvements and weaknesses. Drill-based exercises like repetition, minimal pairs, and tongue twisters can help to develop muscle memory. They can train your tongue, mouth, and throat to regularly pronounce English sounds in a consistent way. However, drill exercises are limited in their usefulness. They don't address the underlying problem or error in your pronunciation. Repeating words, doing tongue twisters or using minimal pairs can really help you as a form of practice if you know what is wrong with your pronunciation. But if you don't know your mistakes, they don't help. Instead, you may be pronouncing words incorrectly. If you do these exercises with incorrect understandings of English pronunciation, you may be training yourself to pronounce words incorrectly. What is the point of developing muscle memory if that muscle memory is doing the incorrect thing? You may be drilling the incorrect pronunciation. And these kinds of exercises can be slightly boring and repetitive. Imitation-based pronunciation techniques. Imitation-based techniques involve imitating or copying the pronunciation, accent or intonation of someone else's speech, usually a native English speaker. 
there are a few different popular imitation-based techniques. Modeling involves listening to native speakers and then trying to copy their pronunciation and intonation afterwards. Shadowing is similar, but you repeat in real time. As you listen to an English speaker, you immediately repeat what they are saying. This is a really popular technique suggested by almost every English teacher, English podcaster and English YouTuber. I've probably suggested it before. And it can be great for imp improving your fluency and accuracy. Accent reduction focuses on overall accent rather than simply pronunciation. For example, imitating the California accent or British received pronunciation as a method to improve your overall pronunciation. You may find it easier to practice pronunciation by copying another accent rather than using your own. Imitation-based techniques have some really good points. Most importantly, it encourages you to focus on the sounds of the language and identify the key components of what you are hearing. You will also develop an ear for the language or get used to listening to and using certain forms of pronunciation. On the other hand, there are some big drawbacks. Like drill techniques, they do little to correct your underlying pronunciation problems or issues. You may think you are correctly shadowing or modelling, but there is a good chance that you are using incorrect English, incorrect pronunciation. And if you practice something incorrectly, you aren't going to be able to use it correctly. And you may sound too similar to a model you are copying. This can sometimes make you sound strange and unnatural. Do you really want to sound like me or an American or do you want to sound like yourself while speaking English? Pronunciation software and apps. Another really popular approach to practicing pronunciation is using software or apps which are designed to practice your speaking. I'm about to mention a bunch of different options or apps you could choose. These aren't recommendations. I want to make that clear. These are not recommendations. I've never used most of them. But they are just some options that you could look at. These also aren't sponsored, which is probably stupid. I should have got some of them to sponsor me. But these apps are not sponsored, right? Uh, first, you've got Duolingo. Duolingo uses games to help people practice their pronunciation, although... Every time I used Duolingo, I turned off the speaking part. So, but you can practice pronunciation on Duolingo. Other apps like Rosetta Stone and Babbel have similar features. You speak your answer and it will accept or reject it. Sites like Fluent U, uh, the British Council and English Central have resources, videos and recordings designed to improve pronunciation. Then there are specific apps that focus just on pronunciation. Two I've heard of before are Pronunciator and Elsa Speak, but I've got no idea if these actually work. I've never personally used them. Using apps and pronunciation software gives you immediate feedback. It tells you if you are correct or incorrect, if it can understand you or it can't understand you. And this can be great. They are also customizable. You can choose yourself how to use them and what kind of lessons you want to focus on. There are also a lot of negatives. They often have a narrow or prescriptive idea of pronunciation. Sometimes things a native speaker would understand could be rejected by the app. And it can be weird to talk to an app. You don't speak in context or naturally. And actually, this is a really important point. I've been back in the UK for two months now, and I've noticed something interesting about my parents. They have an Alexa home assistant from Amazon that is connected to a few lights and the TV. I bought it for them three or four years ago. The way my mum talks to Alexa is completely different from normal. And I think the same thing would happen using a pronunciation app. It's not natural or real, so the way you speak to it 
is not natural or real. And again, these apps don't address the underlying problems. Yes, they could tell you if you are right or wrong, but do they tell you why? Do they teach you how to fix your issues? Probably not. Evidence-based methods to improve pronunciation. The popular methods I just outlined all share a similar problem. They do not address the underlying problems and issues in your pronunciation. Drill exercises, imitation and apps are great for practising. But what if you are practising incorrectly? They don't teach you why you are making mistakes and they don't give you a solution to focus on or improve. The next two methods will help you to address your underlying problems but they also have their own negatives as well. And these next two approaches are based on evidence and scientific understanding of how to actually improve your pronunciation. Phonetic transcription. Every language around the world uses combinations of sounds to make words. Linguists have studied thousands of languages and identified every sound used in all of the languages around the world. The result is the International Phonetic Alphabet, or IPA. The IPA is a set of symbols, standard across the world, that are used to represent the sounds of speech. This alphabet gives us a way to write down the pronunciation or sound of words in every language in a consistent and detailed manner. You can write the sounds of English, German, Japanese, Chinese, or even Aboriginal languages from Australia using IPA. If you learn to read or understand the IPA, you will know exactly how a word is pronounced. The IPA is used in dictionaries and translation software. It is the slightly weird symbols next to words and I use it in my vocabulary posts on Instagram sometimes. Understanding phonology, the sounds of language, is an amazing tool for language learners. I talked with my friend James Brock, one of the previous guests on the podcast, about this very topic. James told me how he received a book of Chinese phonology and studied it all the time. He reached a very high level of Chinese, by studying the position of the tongue when making sounds. Linguists have identified and explained how sounds are made. For example, the f sound and the v sound can be defined as labiodental fricatives. You should learn these terms in your own language, no need to learn them in English. In other words, a vibration or friction is created by forcing air between your teeth, so dental, and your lips, labio, hence labiodental fricative. And your tongue doesn't move. V or V is voiced, so you use your voice box in your throat, and F or F is unvoiced, meaning no voice box. I know this because I studied IPA. I know exactly how to make the sound because linguists have studied it and defined it. Some sound should be made in your throat, some in the back of your mouth. Others use your tongue, lips and teeth. Some are voiced and unvoiced. Some use friction. Learning how the sound is made is one of the best ways to identify the problems in your pronunciation. You can see the mistakes you are making if you can see the sounds. And it focuses your approach on sounds, the most important thing for pronunciation. However, it can be difficult to learn, it's not simple, and it will take time to understand. But for some people, it can be really useful. Experienced and qualified pronunciation teachers. The other evidence-based option is to take pronunciation classes with an experienced and qualified pronunciation teacher. And I mean experienced and qualified. Don't assume every English teacher will be able to teach you how to improve your pronunciation. Even teachers who market themselves as pronunciation specialists 
are often unqualified and don't understand the science behind pronunciation. You need a teacher who will be able to identify the underlying problems in your pronunciation and teach you how to improve it. A random teacher from italki or Cambly, Instagram or even me, people always ask me for pronunciation lessons but I'm not a pronunciation teacher, if you just ask a random teacher they probably won't be able to help you achieve your goals. Find a teacher who has a high level qualification in English teaching. Find someone who understands linguistics, phonology and the mechanics of making sound. Find a teacher who will help you understand IPA and how to use it. If you are interested, thinking in English actually has a teacher who can do this. Nathan, who runs my classes for me, is an English teacher, has a CELTA teaching qualification and an undergraduate degree in linguistics. He is exactly the kind of teacher who would be perfect to diagnose your pronunciation, problems and find solutions. And we are also thinking of running events and workshops on pronunciation, based on science, not based on popular methods, right? Based on the actual ways to improve pronunciation. So let me know if you are interested by leaving a comment or sending me a message. If we get enough interest, Maybe we'll organise a few pronunciation workshops in the next month or so. With a great pronunciation teacher, you will get customised and specific feedback, advice, corrections and drills and exercises to practice. However, such teachers are not the cheapest option. And this might not be a good thing for all of you listening. You have to pay for a teacher. You don't have to pay for shadowing unless you buy a shadowing book, but you could just shadow me for free using my transcripts and this podcast, of course. But a teacher or learning IPA will really help you to understand why you are making mistakes and how to fix those mistakes. So here is today's final thought. Overall, my advice to all of you is to identify the problems and issues in your pronunciation first. Find what you are doing wrong and the mistakes you are making. You can do this with a teacher or do it yourself by looking at phonology, sounds and using the international phonetic alphabet. Once you know the errors, a good teacher can provide explanations and exercises to fix those issues. Or you can use IPA to correct yourself or correct your pronunciation. Then, once you understand your mistakes and issues, you can use drills, imitation and apps to practice, develop fluency and build muscle memory. Pronunciation is about knowledge and skill. But most people forget the knowledge part. They focus on the skill. They focus on practicing practicing and practicing. But without the knowledge, what are you practicing? Without the knowledge of why you are making mistakes, without the knowledge of the underlying issues and problems in your pronunciation, the things you are doing wrong, the reason your tongue is in the wrong position, or your lips and your teeth are not doing what they should be doing while making a sound, without knowing this knowledge, What are you actually practising by doing a tongue twister or a minimal pair? Learn what is wrong with your pronunciation, then work out how to improve it, and then practise. They are the steps you need to know. First, learn the knowledge, then the skill. How do you practise your pronunciation? I'm really curious. Let me know by leaving a comment on the Thinking in English blog, send me a message on Instagram, or leave a comment on Spotify. Uh, While you're on Spotify, give me five star rating. That would be really amazing if you could rate me five stars. If you're listening on Apple, I'd love an Apple review and a five star rating as well, which would also be amazing. I've had some incredible Apple reviews come in in the last few weeks. So please, more nice reviews. 
makes me so happy every time I read a lovely comment or review from one of you listening. If you want to support Thinking in English, you can. Join my conversation clubs. We have conversation clubs running every Tuesday and Thursday at 12pm, 6pm and 9pm UK time. Uh, These conversation clubs allow you to practice speaking with other people for as much time as you can, right? We have six a week. You can join all six if you'd like and speak and speak and speak with people from all around the world. Uh, I choose the topic well, we choose the topic, I guess, and we make uh, vocabulary questions, vocabulary lists, discussion questions, and model answers to help you answer the questions and give you ideas on how to answer. Uh, and these model answers are at different levels, right? B1, B2, and C1. So we are giving you as much opportunity as possible to speak. And speaking, the only way to improve speaking is to speak. So join the conversation club, speak regularly with other people Um, and with your membership you can also listen to bonus episodes, you get discounts on classes and workshops we run and yeah, more stuff, lots more stuff coming in the next few months. If you're interested in English classes, I mentioned in the episode uh, Nathan who works with me, Uh, Nathan runs group classes on Wednesdays. So you can join his group class on Wednesday. They're very affordable, just uh, $10 a class. Or if you're a Patreon member, they're $8 a class, I think. Or you get free classes if you join for $20 a month on Patreon. Um, And yeah, so uh, classes. And he also has one-on-one classes. And we have another teacher working with us as well, Thomas. Uh, Thomas has been a guest on the podcast before. Thomas also has one-on-one classes and he runs some workshops for us uh, quite often. Um, and both Thomas and Nathan help with the conversation groups. So please go in, go in. If you, ha- if you want to take an English class, try a thinking in English class. Uh, we've worked really hard to develop our curriculum and worked really hard to develop our classes. We just need more of you to take them, right? A few more of you taking our classes uh, will really help us, help us start to earn enough money um, to do this full time. But thank you guys. Thank you everyone for listening today. I hope you have a good a good evening. Uh, leave me a rating, join my Patreon, uh, subscribe to me on YouTube, follow my Instagram page, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Do you want affordable English classes with a qualified and professional English teacher? Well, you're in luck. Thinking in English now offers English classes. We have classes for intermediate, upper intermediate and advanced level students which focus on developing your English quickly and effectively. Classes focus on key English skills and the best part is you'll be studying with a small group of Thinking in English listeners. The price is just $10 a class with big discounts for Thinking in English members. Click the link in the description or go to my website thinkinginenglish.link to book now.